Okay, to start off, lay down thread and position your thread about three quarters of the length of the hook shank. Trim off the excess and you can use standard dry fly sizes 16 to 22 for this and I'm using a size 16 standard dry fly hook. Okay, for the ribbing I'm just using standard monofilament or fishing line. I like to use this stuff because it's very strong and yet incredibly lightweight which makes it useful for dry fly imitations. Okay, for the tail I've stripped away some pheasant tail hackles. So I like to have the tail about half the length of the hook shank. So just move them over slightly. Size them up and then turn the thread, just secure them in place. Just may want to position them on top of the hook shank. Just have a quick look at that. Yep, that looks around about right. Once you've got them in place, wind your thread till around half the length of the hook shank. Okay, now cut off the excess for the tail. Now hold those hackles in your hand because if they're long enough you can use them to form the body. If not, you may just have to cut away another bunch. So that end that you've just cut up, cut away. Now just attach them where your thread is, around about the halfway point. And holding the tail and those hackles together for the body, and with tight turns of thread, wind towards the bend of the hook until you get to the barb. Okay, and as you can see there, that tail's looking pretty good. They've come closely together, and now you're ready to form the body. Okay, so now we're ready to form the body of the nymph. So you can use hackle pliers for this if you wish. I just personally like to use my hand. So as you go around the hook shank, just jam up the um, pheasant tail hackles against the hook shank and that just forms a nice tight body as it's wound around the hook shank. And as you can see here, it's already starting to form a nice tapered body, which is exactly what we want. So just keep going around like that until you get to the thread. Once you get to your thread, just tie off with your thread, like so. And what I like to do in this instance is just one, two turns of thread just to stop those pheasant tail hackles from slipping when you're tying them off. So just cut off the excess. And now we're ready to wind on the ribbing. So to do that, we're going to be winding, on, winding them on the opposite direction that we wound on the hackles. Now the reason being is because uh, pheasant tail hackles are quite fragile and by putting on the ribbing in the opposite direction you just make the body a lot more durable. So just keep going around like that with your ribbing till you get to the thread. Once you get to your thread Start to tie off. That's looking pretty good. Okay, cut off the excess. And now we're ready to form the post. Okay, now we're ready to form the post. Now just wound on some Brown Antron, just rub it around the, the thread, like so. And once it's around the thread, the next step is to just start pushing that along the thread itself. Okay, and what will happen is you'll start to get a, a ball forming like so. Okay, now it might help to just start rolling around like that as well. And you can see there how that ball is starting to take shape. So just keep
keep doing that until you get a nice tight ball. Okay, so we've now formed the, the ball, the dubbing ball, which is going to form the post. So what I've done here is just I just slide on the dubbing ball on top of the hook shank. Once it's in place, hold it with your fingers and at the same time wrap the thread behind it, like so, okay? Now, just hold it in place and then bring that thread around and then bring it behind it and then start bringing it in front as well. So it's basically cross wraps on the base and that just helps secure that dubbing ball in place. Just keep doing that a couple of times. That's looking pretty good. So once you've done that, next step is to just wrap around the base and that just forms a nice um, platform for the hackle to be wound on. Okay, just keep doing that. Do that about three times. Once you've done that, you can then start to manipulate that dubbing ball a bit. And you can even start cutting and trimming it until you get the shape that you desire. Okay, now it's time to tie in the hackle. And I've just got a brown coloured, good quality rooster saddle hackle here. And of course you can use neck um, hackles as well. So I've just stripped away the base there. So with the shiny side facing up, tie in the hackle behind the post, like so. And you can probably see there, see how there's an exposed quill there. What I like to do in this instance is just bring that wrap forward of the post and that just locks that hackle in place. Okay, now if you have any exposed quill around the eye of the hook, just try to trim that off because you want room to finish off that fly. Okay, so just do that a couple of times and that's looking pretty good, it's pretty secure. And now we're ready to dub in the thorax. Okay, so now we're ready to form the thorax. And to do that, I'm just using brown Antron, the same stuff as I used for the post, okay? Now the important thing about forming the thorax is you don't want to put on too much dubbing. You just want enough to cover those exposed threads. See there at the base of the post? So what I like to do is just start from behind the post give that a couple of wraps and then I like to go in front and then go back behind the post again so just do that a couple of times so in front and then go behind like that as you can see there on the base those threads have been nicely covered up okay you don't want to put on too much then once you've done that position your thread around the eye of the hook and you're now ready to tie in the parachute hackle. Okay, so now I'm ready to wind on the parachute hackle. And you've noticed here that the actual hook has been tilted slightly upwards and that just lessens the chance of that thread slipping off the over the eye of the hook. And that can happen sometimes when you're tying off um, hackle, when you're using parachute hackles or even when you're using dry fly hackles, okay? I just find that Having the hook in these positions makes it easier to tie off and as I said lessens the chance of that thread coming off. Okay, so using hackle pliers here, start to go around the base of the post like so. And as you go around, try to go below the previous wrap, okay? That just ensures that that hackle stays firmly fixed to the base of the post. So just keep going around like that and let's just have a look how that looks. Yep, that's looking pretty good there, that's the top view. That's how it looks from underneath. So once you've wrapped around about three or four times, now it's time to 
tie it off. So to do that, you got to make sure that you wrap your thread under the parachute hackle, but over the excess hackle that you want to tie off. Can get a bit tricky, but I have noticed that the way the hook's positioned here just makes it a bit easier to do it like this. So just keep doing that about three times just to secure that hackle and that hackle is looking pretty good. So now it's time to snip off the excess. Okay so now we're ready to snip off the excess so just using the tips of your scissors and just be careful that you don't cut off any of the parachute hackle just remove that excess and as you can see there the there is still parachute hackle over the eye of the hook which is exactly what you want okay so once you have done that you are now ready to do the whip finish all right now we're ready to do the whip finish and again i've positioned that hook upwards just makes it easier to conduct this uh, finish so what I like to do, I'm using a Thompson style whip finisher here. So I just like to bring it over through the parachute hackle on the other side. And now, just using the tip of the finisher, and at a slight angle, start to do the whip finish below the parachute. So just keep going like that a couple of times. Once you've done that, use your thumb there and just finish it off. There's a few hackles there that are trapped, that's okay. Just snip off the thread and now just remove that excess hackle there. And as you can see there, it's looking pretty good. There's a top finish there. The floating pheasant tail nymph with a parachute hackle.